In this video, I'm looking at PAG2, which deals with acid base titrations. So, the skills covered in this PAG are the measurement of a volume of liquid, the use of volumetric flasks, including accurate techniques for making up standard solutions, titration using burette and pipette and the use of acid base indicators in titrations of weak or strong acids with weak or strong bases. So what I've done is I've created two scenarios to deal with the skills. So the first scenario is going to deal with the first two and the second one will deal with those. And at the very end I'll talk a little bit about how you choose the right indicator which is only really relevant once you get into second year, year 13. So the first scenario which deals with the scale measurement of liquid and making standard solution. So students being asked to prepare 250 cm cubed of a standard solution of lithium hydroxide which has to have a concentration of 0 0.125 moles per decimeter cubed. Plan how the student could prepare this solution from solid lithium hydroxide and in your answer include details of the practical procedure that would be carried out and include appropriate quantities and necessary calculations. So if you want to pause the video have a go and then play on and we'll go through the answer. So here's my method. So the first thing I've done is I've calculated how many moles of lithium hydroxide would be needed in 250 cm cubes of the solution. So we know that the solution needs to have a, a concentration of 0 0.125 moles per decimeter cubed. Well that's a quarter of a decimeter cubed so we divide by 4 so we need that many moles of lithium hydroxide. So the mass of lithium hydroxide needed would be the moles multiplied by the MR of lithium hydroxide, which is 23.9, gives us a calculator value of that. And in the college I work at, we have a two decimal place balance. So I would need to weigh out 0 0.75 grams of lithium hydroxide. So once I've weighed out the lithium hydroxide, I would need to dissolve it into a beaker containing less than 250 cm cubed of distilled or deionized water. So I would normally get students to dissolve it in about 100 cm cubed. Once you've dissolved it, you then transfer into a 250 cm cubed volumetric flask and then you should rinse the beaker again with distilled or deionized water and add what we call the washings to the flask. So we're making sure that all of that lithium hydroxide goes into the volumetric flask. And then the final thing we do is make the solution up to 250 cm cubed again with distilled or deionized water, stopper and invert the flask several times to make sure everything's thoroughly mixed together. So the second scenario is dealing with the skills uh, required in the titration and use of acid base indicators. So I'm just extending the, um, the student task to then say the student was asked to use this standard solution of lithium hydroxide that they've just made to establish the concentration of a solution of sulfuric acid. So again plan how the student could calculate the concentration of the acid and in the answer details of practical procedure that would be carried out and steps for any calculations. So just as before if you want to pause the video have a go and then play on and we'll go through the answer. So the first thing I'm saying is you would rinse the burette with a small quantity of distilled water followed by the acid. So I'm obviously going to put the acid in the burette. It doesn't really matter whether you put that in or the uh, lithium hydroxide. 
So once the burette's been thoroughly rinsed, I would then fill it up with the acid and make sure that the jet, which is the part of the burette below the tap, make sure that's filled. So normally you would overfill the burette slightly and then run the liquid down through the tap so that that bottom part gets filled up. Then obviously you would record the initial burette reading so you know where your titration starts. Then you would move to the lithium hydroxide solution and you would pipette 25 cm cubed of that standard solution into a clean dry conical flask. Add three to five drops of indicator and I'm choosing phenolphthalein in this case. Remember at the end of the video I'm going to explain why you would choose that indicator over others. You then carry out your trial titration. So in the trial titration you'd add a, a centimetre cubed of acid at a time and you would record the volume of acid required to turn the indicator from pink Phenolphthalein is pink in alkali, colourless in acid. So you're looking for that pink to colourless colour change. So once you've done your trial titration, you know roughly how much um, acid to add. You'd carry out further accurate titrations until you get what's called two concordant results. So what we mean by that are results that are close enough together, i.e. within 0.10 cubic centimetres. Once you've got those concordant results you can calculate the average titra of your accurate results. And remember you should never use your trial titration result in any calculation. So once you've done the um, practical, you, the calculation steps you would carry out so there's the equation for the reaction that's taking place. So the first thing you do is work out the moles of lithium hydroxide used from concentration times volume. So remember the concentration of the lithium hydroxide is 0 0.125 moles per decimeter cubed and we um, pipetted out 25 cm cubed which is that in decimeters cubed. So that's how many moles of lithium hydroxide have been used. The sulfuric acid present in the average titra is going to be half of that. You can see that 2 to 1 ratio. So I've just divided that by 2. And therefore the concentration of the sulfuric acid is those moles divided by the average titra. So I thought to finish off would be a good example to actually put some numbers in. So if you have a look at this worked example. So we're given the students found that 17.4 cm cubed of H2SO4 was actually required to neutralise the 25 cm cubed of lithium hydroxide. Calculate the concentration of the acid to an appropriate number of significant figures. So again, pause the video, have a go and then we'll have a look at the answer. So the moles of lithium hydroxide used is still that concentration times volume. So we've already worked that out on the previous slide. Moles of sulfuric acid is obviously half of that. So the concentration of the acid is the moles divided by the average titra in cubic decimeters, which has given me a calculator value of something like that. And so three significant figures would be appropriate because we've got three significant figures here and so I'm giving it as 0 0.0898 moles per decimeter cubed. And so finally, so this is more for the year 13 students, um, which indicator should you use? So a little reminder here about these titration curves. So we've got the strong acid, strong base, strong acid, weak base, weak acid, strong base, weak acid, weak base. And I always get my students to know about these two indicators, methyl orange and phenolphthalein. Remember, this was the one that, we, that I chose. 
the pH ranges I've given 3 to 4.5 for methyl orange and 8 to 10 for phenolphthalein. So basically, we need to choose an indicator whose pH range lies in this vertical section of the titration curve. Now, the, ty the type of titration we've just done in the task was strong acid, strong base. So sulfuric acid is a strong acid, lithium hydroxide is a strong base. And so you can actually see that methyl orange, well, 1, 2, 3 to 4.5. So it's going to change here. Well, that's in the vertical section. So that would actually be okay. Phenolphthalein, 8, 9, 10. Definitely okay there. So I've gone for that. If you were doing a strong acid weak base, so something like um, hydrochloric acid and ammonia, phenolphthalein would actually be no use because it's changing colour here while well, the titration's over. The vertical section's sort of gone. And then weak acid strong base. If you went for methyl orange, so one, two, three and a half, it's going to change about here. Well, that's no good. We're nowhere near the vertical section. And I've included this so you've got all four curves, but weak acid, weak base, it's very, very difficult to get an indicator um, to um, work with this because there's no vertical section.